I hope the teaching has been clear. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. We've laid a lot of foundation, um, but it's, it's been good. Four days um, is someone trusting you. All right. One is even a lot of trust, but four is a whole lot of trust. Um, and I don't take it for granted. Seriously. Please help me appreciate your pastors. I mean, two days great, three days great, four is a lot of trust, and then we're not done with this. We're talking about awakening. All right, it's just a lot of trust, really. Nobody would do that if they're not comfortable with what they believe God has given you, right? Um, so, for Sunday, Pastor Chakra, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. My wife loves you people. <laughs> no, but seriously, please let me celebrate them again. And please be seated. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. The hospitality, the, it's been good. And, you know, everyone who's been dragging me from airports to room to everything, you guys, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate. Um, so it's our final session here. My final session with you. Uh, you possibly going on with your fast. <laughs> it's fast track. We're still fast tracking it. All right. But it's, it's been a privilege to be part of it. Um, and I trust that whatever supply the Holy Ghost um, has allowed me to bring here would be a lot of fruit, right? A whole lot of fruit. So once again, I appreciate the pastorate, the leadership, you know, and every one of you who've, you know, just received. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, glory to God. So I asked you to check something yesterday. Did anybody do that? Yes. Ephesians chapter number one. I remember six. Did you check it? Yes. Did you see anything there? Yes. Oh, what did you see? What did you find? Uh, oh, help me. What, what did you find? Okay. Oh, okay. Not actually the Greek word, but that's good. All right. No, it's fine. It's fine. All right. Oh, you, you had to cram that. Oh, good stuff. All right. <laughs> that's good. So sometimes I don't want you lost on the Greek word. I need to know the meaning. So what's the meaning? What did you find? Highly favored. Highly graced. All right, so the Bible says, um, um, using King James, to so the praise of his glory, of his grace, all right? Wherein he, watch, watch the language there. Wherein he will make us accepted. Wherein he's about to make us accepted. Wherein he has, he didn't even say he has accepted us. He made us accepted. All right, I said check the word accepted there. Because when you come into Christ, you need to know where you are. You need to understand the covenant that you're in. It's a completely different covenant. So the Bible says we've been accepted in the beloved. Even if you don't know how to check the Greek, which is very simple from what I taught you yesterday. If you have a Greek concordance, which you should, you, I mean, you could easily have one, and then you could have apps on your phone, right? Some you pay for, some you don't. But then you could have these apps, like a Strong's, and then you can just check the words to see what it is. It helps your study a lot better than just reading on surface. Is that Okay. So even if you don't understand Greek and you're not doing all that, it says he has made us accepted in the beloved. Your mind, when you hear beloved, you flash back to one event in the Bible, the baptism of Jesus Christ. And then the voice came and said, this is my beloved son. So it says you have been made accepted in the beloved, meaning the way the father accepts the beloved is the way he accepts you. You are in him. You are in Christ. Do you understand this? All right, so I'm glad you checked it. So when we talk about favor, it's part of your inheritance in Christ. Because you have been made accepted in the beloved. The word accepted there, I'm glad you checked it yourself, means to be highly favored. So every believer is highly favored. And one thing which is a major assignment that I have, all right, to the body of Christ, I believe, is to let us know what we have. Let us know who we are. All right? It's, and that's part one, because you need to know what it is, then you now need to know how to walk in it. Are you getting that now? But we even need a barrage of information on what do we have. Who are we? There's a lot of misconception and a lot of uh, misplaced identity. So we need a lot of overload. This is who you are. This, oh, I, I, you, know, you know, but then we also need to bring in, how do I walk in it so that it's complete, right? Thank you, Jesus. All right, so good stuff. Thank you for checking that. Yesterday, I said something also, and in case you're wondering, but that's part of the foundation for what we're dealing with today. I said we're not blind Bartimaeus, 
So we cannot pray like blind Bartimaeus prayed or any of the people. Uh, sometimes when you say that, people need to get what exactly are you saying and why are you saying that? Because the covenants are different. The covenants are different. I repeat, the covenants are different. What the church has is not what the Jews had. What we have is better. I know somewhere in our minds we know it is better, but what really makes it better? One of those major areas would focus on quickly this morning. So Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. Hebrews 8 and verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. And it's, it's very popular, right? It says, but now he has what now? Obtained a more excellent ministry by how much he also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon, say better. Please say it out loud, better. So the covenant is better. The promises are also better. Say better. Now, Hebrews still, chapter number 7, verse 22. Hebrews 7 and then 22. Hebrews 7, 22. Better, better, better. All right, Hebrews 7, 22 says, By so much was Jesus made the shorty or a shorty of a better covenant. So we're emphasizing the same point. Better. All right, so if my covenant is better, I would not lend prayer, therefore, from all the examples in the Old Testament. I need to find the one that fits the covenant I'm in because there's a better covenant. It has better promises. Hebrews 9 and 15. All right? Just dragging us or driving us in a similar direction. If you study Hebrews, you study Galatians, I mean, most of the epistles, but if you take a study on those two, you will see things that will help you better interpret the Old Testament. All right? Hebrews 9 and 11. I mean, 15, rather. Hebrews 9 and 15. So it says... Um, watch this now. And for this reason, he's the mediator of what? A new covenant or testament that by means of death, once again, the dead, the broken body, the shed blood, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament or covenant, watch this, that, <laughs> and I like this part, that they which are called might do what? Receive the promise of an inheritance or the eternal inheritance. Watch this. So he says that the people that are called might do what? Receive. Say receive. receive. Say, say receive. receive. If you gloss over that word, you won't pick what they are saying there. There is the giving of a promise. There is the receiving of a promise. In the Old Testament, the promise was given. It was not received. So this is part of what makes our own covenant better. It was given. It wasn't received. They did as much of what they walked in. They did not walk in the fullness of it. It was given. It wasn't received. So Bible is saying that Jesus now becomes a mediator of a new covenant so that it might be received. Something has to be received. If people have to receive it. Say given. given. Say received. received. Hebrews 11. We'll pick it from the 13th verse. I might just have to skip so it's faster. Quite a bit of grounds to cover. Hebrews 11, verse 13. You remember Hebrews 11? Yes. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, right? Hebrews 11, watch this. These all died how? In faith, not having received the promise. But having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So promise was given, but they did not receive. All right? Now, they walked in huge dimensions of it. In physical health, in financial prosperity, but all the promises were not limited to those. There's a fullness of it they did not get because they could not get it. So it was given, but it wasn't time for it to be received. All right? We'll just see the last two verses I'm skipping. If you can, read the whole of Hebrews 11, you see it. 39 and verse 40. So don't forget again, they all died in faith without receiving. It was given, they didn't receive. All right? Not because they couldn't, they would have wanted to, but they just couldn't. It wasn't for them. Hebrews eleven thirty nine, 39, please. Hebrews eleven thirty nine. 39. Thank you. Look at it again. So verse 13 says they didn't get it. Look at verse, you know, 39 again says, And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, what happened? Receive not the promise. Next verse is more interesting. 
God, what? Haven't provided some better thing for who? Us. us. That day without us should not be made perfect. Whose time is better? Are you sure? But if you're not careful, when you study the Old Testament, it looks like it was better. It was more glorious. You had more action movies. All right? A whole lot of drama and gymnastics. Let me ask you this very simple question. The Bible has the answer, but let me just ask you. Who was more anointed, Moses or Jesus? Jesus. Actually, again, who was more anointed, Moses or Jesus? But who had more spectacular drama happening around here? So don't be fooled by the spectacular drama. Jesus had the fullness. Fullness of the spirit. But he didn't have pillar of fire. He didn't have pillar of cloud. He didn't have earth opening. He didn't have all of that. But he carried the fullness. Those dramas had a reason, so you study the reason. Do you understand that? If not, it looks like, oh, then we start praying that God should bring back those days. That's retrogression. God is not going backwards. God is going forward. And the man that carried the totality of the fullness didn't even carry the drama. So it means you need to study what it is. You need to study why it is. Why is this covenant better? But we're not entering all of that. Just needing to stabilize. But have you seen from a few examples now that our own covenant is better? Yes. Are you sure? So I said we'll just zero in a lot on something that really makes it different. All right? And um, there's sentimental attachment to this kind of topic, you know, because we, we touch a soft spot, particularly because we sing it, we say it, and all of that. But I'll say as much as I can, and then... So as to get to the foundation of what we're going, because this is the reason why Jesus died. One major reason the New Testament is better than the old is because the old covenant was a covenant with servants. You don't have to judge if you don't know what to write. Just follow it, you'll get it. When you get it, then you know what to write. The old covenant was a covenant with servants. That's why the highest relationship God could have with anybody there was friendship. So Abraham was referred to as a friend of God. God said, I speak with Moses face to face as a man will speak to his friend. Because that's the highest of relationship that covenant could afford. All right? So I used Abraham. Now, Abraham is not in Moses' dispensation, but Moses sourced his covenant from the Abrahamic covenant. All right? So God cut a covenant with Abraham. God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and say, I cannot hide this thing from Abraham that I'm about to go do. And God tells Abraham. So God was able to reveal secrets, the thoughts of his heart, to a man called Abraham. Because that was his blood covenant partner. Then that covenant gave birth to the Mosaic one, which is now the official first covenant, on that which also God says, like I said, I talk to Moses like I talk to a friend. But that's the height of it, because it's a covenant of slaves or servants, more like. You have to understand the dimension of this. So I'll give you a summary so you get it. In Genesis, God made a man called Adam. Say Adam. When God made Adam, God wanted a family. So Adam sins and lost that right, that opportunity, and actually God lost more than Adam lost. God actually lost the family was trying to put together. So blood is being shed. First of all, the blood of an animal. They get animal skin. Why? There needs to be a remission. There needs to be a redemption because I need my family back. But if I need my family, animal blood cannot pay for my family. But we need to spill animal blood temporarily to build relationship. To build a bridge. So God's relationship with Abraham and then him becoming friend is so that through this relationship we can reestablish where we are going to. Then the mosaic principles came in, the law, the priesthood, the ordinances, the sacrifices. All of that, Eve offering, sin offering, wave offering, the, you know, everything was going on. So that they could have a covering temporarily 
and there could be a relationship. But that's not where God is going. God lost a family in the beginning. God, wants, God lost a family. God wants his family back. You have to understand this. God lost a family. God wants a family back. So all the spilling of blood was, I need my family back. God is not satisfied with servants. God is not interested in slaves. If it's just for people to serve him, angels are fine. But God wants children. And the privilege that God gets to Adam, listen, in Genesis, God said, let there be trees. Let there be birds. Let there be fishes. God could have as well said, let there be human beings. But the privilege he gave to Adam was, I'm going to make you one. Then I'll bring Eve out of you, one. Then two. Then two of you begin to multiply. Meaning through you, I will fill the earth. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. God could have said, let there be human beings everywhere. So God gave Adam the privilege of having children on his own behalf. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says there are two Adams. There's a first Adam. There's a last Adam. So what do these Adams represent? They are the first men of each creation. So as Adam in the Garden of Eden was the first man of that creation, the new Adam, the last Adam, is the Adam of another creation. In both instances, God wanted his family back. So the shedding of blood is family. It's beyond just, oh, uh, can I get a car? Can I get a house? I need my children back. And blood of bulls and goats won't get it, like I said. So it's only the blood of a son that can bring sons. So for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Why? It's seed time harvest. I want more, I give the one I have. Are you understanding this now? Because all through the Old Testament, they could not become sons. That's why there were promises, but the Bible said they didn't receive it. They could not receive it. Because the fullness of the promise was sonship. We're still together, right? In Hebrews chapter number 1 from verse 1, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says that God in diverse manners, in time past, let me just wait till we'll all take it together. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Say we have a better covenant. Say, God who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto our fathers by who? Don't forget that. Prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us by who? Son. Son. Whom he has appointed hell of all things by whom he made the words. I won't stay too long there. So God in time past spoke to the fathers by who? Prophets. In the last days, he spoke by who? So the moment you introduce sonship, you introduce a new dispensation. Technically speaking, God was the father of the Hebrew nation. All right? But spiritually speaking, he was not. Those of you that understand the language that Jesus used in the book of John, he said to them, you are of your father, the devil. They were still, regen they were still not regenerated. So they couldn't be his children. Secondly, they themselves knew they couldn't be his children. That's why when Jesus called himself God's own son, they wanted to stone him. They understood sonship. They said, we, are, we can't be God's sons. How can we be children of Jehovah? Mount of Transfiguration. Do you remember how many people appeared there? Two. Who and who? Moses and Elijah. Moses represents what? The law. Elijah represents the prophets. So Moses is standing, representing law. Elijah stands, represents prophet. And the voice came again and said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Meaning, you have heard the law, you have heard the prophets, who should you hear now? Because the law had tried to produce the space. The prophets have preserved you with the law, guiding you up until now, but you cannot enter fullness until son tells you what to do. That's why when the son came, he said, I am the way. So the other people were preparing you till I come. Please understand this thing. The drama started from Genesis. God lost a family. So all this blood, blood, blood is to get his family back. So 
So God now, in sending Jesus, says, this is my son, hear him. So Bible interpretation, therefore, has to be done through the lens of Christ. All right, what did he come to do? What did he come to accomplish? How am I here? What, what makes me different from these guys? All right, say sonship. Say, say, say sonship. Now, like I said, the Old Testament, the highest relationship you can have is what? Friendship. Now, like I said, you know, sometimes this could be sentimental in teaching because we're sentimentally attached to the word friend. You know, God, I want to be your friend. God, I am your friend. And then we're saying, I'm a friend of God. And it's wonderful within context. But it's a lower level of relationship. When we finish the thing, you would understand it. All right? Because Jesus shows up now and he introduced himself as friend. He brought in the higher version because that's what God wanted from the beginning. Once again, Abraham could have had it, but he couldn't because the blood of a son had not been shed. And blood of goats cannot give you that one. John 15, 15. Very popular. John 15, 15. I'll use the conversation between Jesus and his disciples to show you. John 15, 15. Hallelujah. All right. Now I need, now I need to run fast. <laughs> John 15, 15, please. Thank you. John chapter 15 and then verse 15. Yep. Hence what I call you, not what? Servants. servants. For servants do not know what his Lord. All right. For servants doesn't know what his Lord. But I have called you what? Friends. Friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I what? Now this conversation sounds good. Jesus, I want to be your friend. Because the things you hear from your father show me, no, it's not good, it's bad. What he did here was just upgrade them by one level. You are no more servants, you are friends. But listen to the rest of the language. Whatever I hear from my own father. My own. See the language. Whatever I hear from who? My father. I will tell you are still an outsider. Did you see the language there? You are no more a servant, no problem, but now you're a friend. How many of your friends could follow into your parents' bedrooms? Very few. Except ones have become family friend. So family had to enter the friendship. All right? They could get to the kitchen. They could get to the sitting room. They could go to the backyard. But mommy's bedroom, daddy's bedroom, that's a no-go area. Why? That's a friend. So I can tell you what's happening in my house, but it's not your house. Then we get to the Passover meal. He breaks the bread. He gives them the cup. They know something is transpiring tonight. This man is making us blood brothers. Because it's a higher relationship. Then he resurrects. Then Mary meets him. That piece of saying. So in John chapter number 20 verse 16. Look at the difference in language now. John 20 verse 16. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned, you know, and said to him, Rabboni, which means master. Next verse, please. And Jesus said to her, do not touch me. And people think, oh, he said to her because she's a woman. No. He has nothing to do with gender. He resurrected at this point as high priest and he was still going to the father. And nobody interrupts the high priest on his way. Do you understand that? So it's simple. All right. Do not touch me. Listen to the rest of the language. For I am yet ascended. I'm not yet ascended to who? My father. Now go and tell my friends. Something has changed. Something has changed. Now go and tell my brothers and say to them, I ascend to who? My father, my father and who? Your father. Your father. My God and who? Your God. Your God. So it switched from, I'm not calling you servant anymore. Now I call you friend. Oh, good Jesus, I want to be your friend. No. When I resurrect, when the blood of a son is shed, then we get more sons. When the blood of a son is shed, then we enter the totality of the covenant, which was the reason why the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. God wanted a family. Anybody seeing this now? So he didn't say my father. He said my own father and your own father. Now we are brothers. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. The totality of the covenant is family. It's a family conversation now. The outsider is now the insider. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are how many? 
1. For that reason, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. brethren. Jesus is now your brother. It means now you are a partaker, you are a, you are a family member, you are an insider. Oh, glory to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans 8, 29. Romans 8, 29. Romans 8, 28 says, you know, we know that all things work together for good, right? 29 says, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of who? That he might be firstborn amongst how many friends? Amen. Friends. Amen. Colleagues. Amen. Servants. Amen. The language has changed. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. The language changed. He is the head of the church, I mean head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn, firstborn, firstborn. Meaning there are other bonds. Hallelujah. Firstborn from the dead that he might have the preeminence in all things. First John chapter 3 verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Is this helping anybody? You are not an outsider. Beloved, <laughs> behold, I was trying to say behold and beloved at the same time. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called what? Therefore, the world doesn't know us because the world doesn't know him. Even we don't know ourselves. That's me adding that. All right, that's why we need to hear it. Verse 2, please. No, don't, don't go yet. Verse 2. Verse 2. Beloved. What's the next word there? Now. What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Now. Next week? Now. When we all get to heaven? Now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? Now. So when are you God's son? Now. Say, when are we God's son? Now. So I, I know, you know, sometimes, particularly, you know, we use the word servant. I have to understand servant within the context where the apostles will use it, like born servant and all that. It's not servant like slave. It's not servant like servitude. No. All right? So you have to understand context and language. And when we say friend, oh, you know, I just want to be your friend. No, no. No, in the conversation we're having tonight, you realize that friendship doesn't cut it. Why? Sons are heirs. So when you have conversation about inheritance, friends don't get it. All right? You hardly put your friend in your wheel. Yes? Who's with me tonight? Yes. And this is about Family? It's about inheritance. Friends don't enter it. Few servants make it. Maybe a few friends. But usually, who is there? Sons. Family. So when we talk about the word of God, is inheritance. The kingdom of God is about inheritance, and it's family members that share it. So all this shedding of blood is bringing the outsider in. Say outside. outside. Say inside. Say, say outside. outside. Say inside. inside. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. We'll read 6 and 7. Galatians 4, 6 and 7. Hallelujah. And because you are what? Sons. Sons God has sent forth the spirit of who? Son. Son into your heart crying, my friend, my friend. No. Abba. So the spirit in you cries out, Father. Father, 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 Father. Look at the next word there. Next verse. Wherefore you are no more a... That means there was a time they were servants. It says, now you are no more servants but a son. And if a son, then what are you? Oh, this is so beautiful. It says, sons are hairs. Say, say, sons are hairs. Say, sons inherit something. Ah, should we read this one? Let's see how fast we can read it. Let me see. How fast, how fast, how fast. Galatians 4, should we try it? Still, the heaven from, from verse 21. It's just interesting when you see it. Galatians 4 from 21, NLT, and then just scroll me fast, if you don't mind. Let's, let's try and do it quick. Tell me you who want to live under the law. Do you know what the law actually says? The scriptures say that Abraham had how many sons? One from a slave woman, the other from a freeborn woman. Let's go. The son of the slave wife was born of inhuman attempt to bring about the fulfillment of the promise, but the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. Okay, let's go. These two women, uh, these two women serve as an illustration of how many covenants? 
Please notice the language. These two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, where people receive the law that what? That means they were slaves and servants. Let's keep going. But now Jerusalem is just like what? In Arabia, because she and her children live in slavery. All right. Let's go to so the covenant of servants and slaves. All right. But the other woman, Sarah, represents. So that means there are two kinds of Jerusalem. There's the earthly Jerusalem. There's heavenly Jerusalem. That's why like Hebrews chapter 12 says you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. All right. So there's a Jerusalem above Jerusalem. Anyway, <laughs> she represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman and she is whose mother? Oh, All right. Isaiah said, rejoice, O childless woman. You who have never given birth, break into joyful shout. You who have never been in labor, for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. Let's go. <laughs> and you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of promise like Isaac. He's talking to you. All right, let's go. <laughs> but you are now being persecuted by those who want you to keep the law, just as Ishmael, the child born by the human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the spirit. Let's go. But what does the scripture say? Or what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son. What does he say next? For the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with. It. Oh, come on. This covenant thing is about inheritance. And only who gets the inheritance? Son. Oh, come on. Is there a son in this house? Is there a child of God in this house? Are you born of God? Now, when we come to sonship, we can talk about the levels of sonship, right? When you're a baby and then, you know, in appeals and then you grow, 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 you mature. But this is, first of all, available to sons. Because that's what it is. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Colossians 1 and 12. We could go back to New King James now. All right? Yeah, it, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. It, uh, giving thanks to who? Father, who has made us meet to be what? Partakers of the inheritance. The word made meet there is qualified, right? N NIV? NIV. Well, the rest of them do, they, they do justice to it. Right? NIV, good. Giving thanks to, giving joyful thanks to who? Who has. All right, stop, stop, stop. Hold on. This, this, just so that you can go and meditate when you get home, this is a shouting place. Why? You are qualified. Yes. You are qualified to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. You've been qualified. All right? Things will come and fight you to disqualify you. All right? Your bad character can hinder you. You're not walking in love. You understand those kind of things. You don't need those things. The father qualified you. The door was swung open. You were brought in as an insider. Do you understand this now? I, I'm, I'm a son. And sons are heirs. Sons inherit. Oh, glory to God. Hebrews 9, 16. Hebrews 9, 16. Say, I am a son. Do you believe it? All right. So I told you the word testament is also the word covenant. Now I'm going to introduce another word with testament. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. If a man writes a will, you can't get anything from that will until the man is dead. Yes. All right, TPT please. Thank you. Oh, thank you Jesus. Say inheritance. inheritance. Because when somebody dies, that's when you have access to inheritance, have we? Thank you. <laughs> now, a person's last will and testament can only take effect after he has been proven to have died. Did Jesus die? Yes. Alright, slow down. I'm coming. <laughs> now, a person's last will and testament can only take effect after he has been proven to have died. Otherwise, the will cannot be in force while the person who made it. Oh, come on. We cannot bring sons into this thing until the son dies. So the son has to break his body Shed his blood because we need the shedding of blood. The life of the son has to be given for this contract. I'm using the human language now. This covenant to come alive. So, back to Adam. 
God said, listen, we're going to make man in our image after our likeness. All right, he's going to have dominion over everything. Psalm 8 says, what is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. You made him a little lower than angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. And you put all things on thy feet. So God willed everything to Adam. Adam lost it. But God says, we're getting it back. So how are we going to do that? We send another son. I'm using another in context. Just first Adam, last Adam. Okay, please stay. Don't lose that, all right? So we send this son. Let me just say that so it's clearer. We send the son, but the last Adam. What does he need to come and do? Shed his own blood. Why? So I can just get beans and Gary? No. So as to restore sonship. Restore dominion. Restore authority. Restore power. Restore everything. So you cannot have had Jesus... All right, or you cannot have Jesus as the Lord of your life and live like you're under an old covenant. Your relationship with the Father is not servanthood. Your relationship with the Father is not even friendship. He brought you into his son. You are now given birth to by God. Abraham had a kind of righteousness. The Bible said Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness. You have a higher righteousness than that. Because he made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Abraham had righteousness put in his account. You, you were created as righteous. So the covenant is higher. God could have done it for Abraham, but he couldn't because that thing could not be done until the blood of his son was shed. Are we together? So say Jesus died. Say he died. Thank you. Say he died. The moment he died, what happened to the will? Did it come into effect? Yes. Then why are we living like there was no will? Well, why are we scrumming around like, did Papa leave anything? He didn't, hey, see, hey, whoa. He didn't, did he put my name? Ha, ah, hey, whoa. See, see what Papa gave you. Then you envy someone else's testimony. Did you go and check your own will? Because the person got you from where you are to get your own. It was the same will, same blood, same son. And he made it open to all the sons. To someone now by commitment, by intensity, by faith development, walks in certain realities. They are, ah, they are better than me. Did you check the will? Peter said, we have all been given a like precious faith. Issue is, what are you doing with your own? So you don't envy people. You don't, ah, see them, see them, see them. Now, yes, there is the gift of special faith, but at least the one that God dealt with to every man, what are you doing with it? Because it's by faith we receive. James 1 says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask from God that gives to all men liberally and pray that not. All right, but he said, let him ask in faith. So even wisdom that I need, I must ask it in faith. So this inheritance is received by faith. But you need to even know there is an inheritance. All right? When we talk about the prodigal son, you know, we have different ideas about it, and it's fine. But I like that young boy. That one. I like him. You say he's not a bad boy. There's a revelation he brought. What is it? My father has inheritance. Are you hearing me now? He brought the, and you know the father didn't contest with it. You want it? Take it. Your father doesn't have a problem. All right? Now, he squandered it. Bad part. The church of Jesus is in two extremes. Those who just want the hip hop kind of Christian, right? Just enjoy life. And then those who like to serve and see the other people as you're not serious. But the best of sons is a combination of both. You must understand the inheritance and must understand how to serve. Who is seeing that now? Because the guy that was running the flask business was the older brother. But the older brother ran the business so much, he didn't even understand his rights and privileges. He said, Daddy, you could not even kill goat for me. And then he gave this guy a cow. Daddy said, all that I have was yours in the beginning. Way. That means you didn't need permission. So you have to serve because that's how daddy's business will run. But then you must understand that this inheritance belongs to me. Back again to that Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9, 16. TPT. Hebrews 9, 16, TPT. All right? Uh, yeah. Now a person's, and I like the language here, the person's last will and, because legally that's what they call it, right? A person's last will and testament can only take effect 
after one has been proven to have died. Otherwise, a will cannot be in force while the person who made it is still alive. Verse 17, please. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. TPT does that. Put the two together. Give me NLT both now. 16, 17. Thank you. Now, when someone leaves a will, okay, yeah, it is necessary to prove that the person who made the will is what? So once again, did Jesus die? Did Jesus die? Did Jesus die? Did Jesus die? die? Next verse. The will goes into effect only after the person's death, while the person who made it is still alive. So we didn't enter New Testament until the death of Jesus. So technically, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not New Testament portions of the Bible. All right? Because there was no shedding of blood. You understand what that? Watch this. Did Jesus die? Yes. I want to, I'm looking for who to, who to borrow as Jesus this evening. Anybody, quickly. One person. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Maybe you come down here because you need to die. <laughs> you understand the illustration, right? Thank you. Just stay here, sit, and lie down. All right. Did Jesus die? Yes. Did we prove that he's dead? Yes. So the proof of his death means that the will. The moment he died, all of us became rich. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. The moment you prove that the person is dead, what happens to your will? So what happens to your life? Why are we living like there's no will? Why are we living like there's no inheritance? Why are we begging for the things that have been willed to us? In the Old Testament, they were told, you will serve the Lord your God, he will bless your bread, bless your water, and he will take sickness away from me, of you. In the New Testament, it's not that. Now, service is foundational. Don't get it wrong. But in the New Testament, it's by his stripes. He did it. You now just were born to realize they've settled my healing. In the New Testament, he became poor so that... Do you understand this thing now? He became cursed so that you can be blessed. So why are we living? Oh, God, God. 2024, bless me. You, 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 you. Did you check your will? The moment he died, the will came alive. The moment he died, the will came alive. Did he die? Did he die? So when I'm confessing the word, there's no demon in hell that can stop it. Because the person that made this will died and was proven to have died. Story didn't end there. Jesus, rise up. <laughs> Papa made a will. Papa dies so that the will is in force. Papa now resurrects from the dead to sit on top of the administration of his will. Yeah. There's no reason why we should fail. Is he alive? Yes. Did he die? Yes. Is he alive? Yes. Why did he die? To ratify the will. To set it in motion. Now he's alive. To make sure you get your stuff. Yes. To make sure you get your stuff. He resurrected and told them all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto death. Therefore take it. Go into all the world. He's enforcing it. He's enforcing it. He said listen I make you a promise you'll get the Holy Ghost. But I need to go first. So he died. He was effective. Then he resurrected. I told them wait in Jerusalem. That thing I said to you is about to happen. He woke up to make sure. To make sure. And did they not get the Holy Ghost? Do we not have the Holy Ghost today? Who do you think the Holy Ghost is? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse, first, verse 12. We looked at it a bit on Sunday. So add Sunday and jump from there. First, who, who do you think the Holy Ghost is? 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12 please. It tells you one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit. Now we have received. Not the spirit of this world. But the spirit that is of God, so that you may know the things. So the spirit of God is the holy administrator. Are, are you getting that now? Because Jesus is the, he, he resurrected to administer, but physically he's in heaven. So who is he walking through? To make sure you get your stuff. That's why you hear, get this way. Move that way. Sow this seed. Pray for your enemy. Do, what, what's the Holy Ghost doing? Walking through. You need to get your stuff. I'm going to show you how. You saw the spirit. You showed me a picture of how to enter. No, don't worry. Follow my own instruction. Yeah. What's he doing? Making sure you get your stuff. They offended you. Forgive them. The word says, Do you understand that? He sends you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, ministry gifts to do what? Perfect you. Equip you because you must get your stuff. Sons are hairs. 
Sons are heirs. Sons are heirs. Sons are heirs. Sons are heirs. So stop living like you don't have an inheritance. Do you understand this, please? Stop living like you don't have an inheritance. Giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Is this helping somebody? Say, I'm a son. Say, I'm a hair. I'm a hair of God. And I'm a joint hair with Jesus. Now, Galatians 4, 7 again. Let's pick it from you know, Hebrews 1 again and then wrap this up quickly. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm going to have a bit of, you know, some minutes. Our final session just to spend time declaring and speaking to our lives. Is that okay? Yes, Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Can I have someone on the keyboard now? Anybody? Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yep. Hebrews 1, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spoke in time past to our fathers by who? Verse, let's go on. Okay. And is this last day spoken to us by his son? Watch this. Watch this. His son, whom he appointed heir. So who is heir? Son. Who is heir? Son. In this context, Jesus. Yes. Who is heir? Son. Galatians 4, 7 again. Galatians 4, 7. Galatians 4, 7. Galatians 4, 7. Wherefore, you are no more what? A servant, but who? A and if a son, then what? Yes. Sons are heirs. Sons inherit stuff. Sons inherit. So if I'm God's own son, then I'm God's heir. And you know Bible says that already. You're God's heir. Think like it. Live like it. So the things they didn't receive were received now. Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians 3 and 13. I'm God's own son. Did God say the cattle on the thousand hills belong to him? Yes. Is God eating cattle in heaven? Yes. Who owns them? Is there a son in this house? Yes, do the silver and the gold belong to him? Yes. Is God spending it in heaven? No. Who do they belong to? He yes. says the earth is the Lord's. Yes. Peace on the earth is the Lord's. Abuja belongs to God. Yes. But you have portion in it, right? Yes. Is he your father? Yes. Do you have inheritance? Yes. Is anybody thinking about landed property? Yes. Does the earth belong to God? Yes. Is there a son of God in this house? Is there a son of God in this house? Is there a son of God in this house? So you can say that that... Oh, come on. Glory to God. Are you understanding this? Abuja belongs to me. And the fullness thereof. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is anyone that what? And he hung on the tree, his body was broken, blood was shed. So it's covenant, right? Next verse. Watch this. That the blessing of Abraham, the one Hebrew said he didn't receive, that the blessing of Abraham might come where? On the Gentiles through who? Christ Jesus, that we might. So the one that they were promised they didn't get, he says you are getting it. What is the promise? Context here, promise of the Holy Spirit. Abraham couldn't have the Holy Spirit living inside him. Moses didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside him. In fact, Peter was saying that these prophets, when they prophesied, they were trying to look into the times and to see the people that this thing belonged to. Even angels were trying to peek. It was all about you. It was all about you. David, David said, let us go. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house of God. Now, Paul writes and says, you are the temple. So the things they couldn't enjoy then has happened to you now. All because a blood was shed. Not anybody ordinary blood. It's the very blood of Jesus Christ. Do you understand who you are? So when you want to pray and you say, Father, you know what you're saying. You're acknowledging that covenant, that access. That's why when Jesus was going to teach them the model of prayer, he said, our Father. He was introducing fatherhood. He said, I'm bringing you to this. When Paul was praying in Ephesians chapter number 3, he said, I'll bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, before whom the whole family in heaven and on earth has been named. So it's a family conversation. It's a family conversation. It's a family of kings. 
So it's not that Jesus is the king that we bow down to every day and then we are slaves. No. We are kings bowing down to a king that is not just a but the king because he made us kings. Do you understand that? So you reign in life. I'm not an ordinary person. You're not an ordinary person. Blood was shed to bring you in. And you're not an outsider. All right? Even if your dad is your boss, he's still your dad. Jesus said, a servant cannot abide in the house forever. But a son does. Your sons in your father's house. Is anybody in his father's house? Is this your father's house? Are you in the kingdom of God? It means the wealth in the father's house are available to you. The resources in your father's house are available to you. All things belong to you. You're a son in the house. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I could read a few more, but I think. <laughs> Just pray in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Pray in the spirit. If you get too cozy praying, you could stand, please. You know, if... if, if if your season position is too cozy, stand. But could you start with thanksgiving? Giving thanks unto the Father. Giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified me. Like you went through all of this drama, God, to bring me in. <laughs> you went through all of this shedding of blood just to get us in. You had to make a first covenant first so your son can have a natural lineage to come through. Till all of us could be brought in as sons. Oh, Father, thank you. Giving thanks unto the Father, the Bible says, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Qualified us to be partakers. Qualified us to be partakers. I've been qualified. My Father qualified me. Giving thanks unto the Father who qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance I've been brought in I've been brought in I've been brought in I've been brought in what am I looking for that is not in my father's house why must I compromise why must I enter corruption whatever I need is in my father's house whatever I need is in my father's house oh I give thanks to the father he qualified me he qualified me to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints to be a partaker thank you father thank you father thank you father oh chala la busata na masata gaburra basata ya balakadosa kero ronda barakadose frondo koro kodoso fredise meno non dalakadose freto koro kuse kere kere 2024 was stepping into our inheritances it was there all the while we're waiting for the father's permission but daddy said all that i have is yours 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 what do you do you take what is yours you take what is yours no good thing will he withhold from you so all that he has is yours you say but daddy i thought i needed permission he said take it take it take it take it that new job take it that promotion take it take it your well-being your welfare take it all that the father has is yours you say but daddy you didn't even give me cow small goat small goat he said take it take it take it take it you are a son in the house You are a son in the house. You are a son in the house. You are a son in this house. Come on, somebody. <laughs> all things are mine. All things are yours. He's given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Is given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 
He's giving unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That sickness does not belong in your body. So it's not, oh God, when will you heal me? By his stripes you were healed. So what should I do? Take your healing. That in the name of Jesus, body, I declare that you are well. Body, I declare that you are strong. Immune system, I call you well. I call you high. I call you sharp. I declare my body strong because the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, he lives in me and he gives life to my body. I grow from strength to strength because I am in Zion. I am in Zion. I am in Zion. I am in Zion. I go from strength to strength. I go from strength to strength. I am in Zion. You say, oh, there's, there's insecurity. I've come to an innumerable company of angels. I take my inheritance. I take my inheritance. Maybe symbols. Are... Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I take my inheritance. The earth is the laws and his fullness thereof. Landed properties belong to God. And it's not for the devil and his own children. I take my inheritance. I take my inheritance. You need land for those visions that God has given you. You need land for the orphanage. You need land for the school. You need land for your business. You need property for your office. The earth is the Lord's. Romans chapter 4 verse 13 Romans 4 and 13 Romans 4 and 13 says for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith so we who entered by Christ have become heirs of the world the promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham and to his seed through the law but to them that came by the righteousness of faith. You have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. In the name of Jesus. Every sickness in this place. Every disease in this place. In the name of Jesus. We declare that you are illegal. Whether you're here live or you're watching live stream. Or you're watching later. In the name of Jesus. Sickness. We break your hold. Disease, I declare that you dissipate, Amen. you disappear Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the presence of the Holy Spirit in you, I call that sickness dissolved. Amen. I declare that disease is dissolved. Amen. I declare that tumor is dissolved. Amen. I declare that cyst disappears Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you are the hair of God. I declare that in the name of Jesus you will walk in a greater revelation of your inheritance and that in the name of Jesus you will enjoy supernatural surprises you will enjoy supernatural surprises doors open for you favor overshadows you people come to your assistance you enjoy increase in angelic ministration in the name of Jesus Amen. all that belongs to God belongs to you you've been qualified so don't let any nasty habit or thought disqualify you don't let anything hold you back slow you down don't let anything hold you back stand or fly we're doing big things for God 2024 there'll be demands there'll be commands and instructions run into them quickly sharp sharp 